good that's all we need so I'll save that and that looks good now before I save now I'm gonna uh, look at the rule related to it so now that we have an account added hit the drop down and I'm gonna create a rule for it we need some rules around here so any conditions match and notice that if you're gonna try to set up a condition where you want the dollar amount to be over a certain dollar amount in uh in order to to make it a a fixed asset which is kind of an arbitrary thing because really something that should be a fixed asset if you're going to be using it for multiple periods into the future however there is kind of a materiality threshold where you're like well i'm if i bought a, a year's worth of paper clips even though I'm going to use or five years worth of paper clips, I might just expense them because the dollar amount is small. So really, uh, you might have a dollar amount kind of involved and say, hey, look, if I'm looking at a rule, if it's over a certain dollar amount, that's when you might put it in the books as a fixed asset as opposed to, say, supplies, for example. If that was the case, we might go to all conditions here and say, <clears throat> we're going to look at not the payee. I'm going to look at the any text field just like we normally do any text field if it contains and i'm going to put part of the name that's all i need all that other junk uh if it just has that i should be good and i have another condition where maybe i put an amount uh and if i say the amount is over if it's greater than let's say uh 1000 then possibly we put it in the books as a fixed asset if it's less than 1000 maybe you put it in the books as supplies and that can at least help you to to see the dollar amount or for example if you bought multiple things from this place like if it was an amazon or an office depot or a home depot and most of the time what you purchase you categorize as supplies but sometimes you might be purchasing fixed assets from that same location you might set a dollar amount for your normal transactions that are below everything that's below $1,000 you put into supplies. And then you might leave that as your only rule. And that rule then would not be applying if the amount was over $1,000 so that you can kind of give a, a more of a double check to make sure that you are categorizing uh, uh, the proper amounts for fixed assets. Or you can make two rules, right? You can make one rule saying it's the same vendor if it's under a thousand dollars i just want you to put it to supplies and if it's over a thousand dollars like we have it here we want you to put it to equipment right that's the general idea all right uh set the 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 contact uh existing contact i'm going to say it's going to be uh that series series we set it up last time i'll create it here hopefully i didn't put it in there twice and then down below, we're going to say the account is going to be the uh, equipment account that we just set up. Equipment. So there it is. And then I'll set this to reference checking account. So there we have it. So I'm going to save that. And the rule should be applying now. So there's the rule <coughs> applying. My voice is going. This is not good. This is not good. Don't go, voice. Don't go. So I'm going to add this. This will record the transaction and it will reconcile the transaction so we'll go ahead and say let's say okay and check it out so if i go to the balance sheet then we update the balance sheet and if i go into the the i got a little thrown off there because uh zero actually does the proper thing here which some software doesn't do like this like a, for example uh a quickbooks doesn't normally do this it pulled the checking account down here into the liability. Why? Because the checking account is overdrawn. So it's actually properly recorded now as a liability because it's overdrawn because we haven't yet uh, put the beginning balance into the checking account. So I, so that's actually, again, another thing that, that Zero does uh, more properly actually than, than some other softwares uh, like the major competitors like uh, like uh, QuickBooks Online, for example. So if I go into this, there's the money out, the spend money form. Uh, if we go back on up, the other side did not go to the income statement, but rather, uh, hold on, I went too far back. I just want to go back to the balance sheet. The balance sheet. 
All right, the other side went into the equipment here. So it went into the equipment with the money out form, a fixed asset type of account. And if I go to the tab to the right, nothing happened to the income statement. So that's gonna be you know, the point of the fixed assets. Now, when we get into the fixed assets, just realize that when you, the next question is, well, when do I get an expense from it? And when I say get an expense, I'm often thinking from a tax standpoint, because if you're in the United States, you're gonna have to do your income taxes. And when you do that, you're gonna say, well, I want to, I would like to just expense the entire thing to lower my net income and pay less taxes. Uh, but we have to do it in the form of depreciation. There might be accelerated depreciation for the tax software and whatnot, but that's the, that's the general idea. We have to 